welcome again our guest. What's your name? Anna. Praise the Lord, Anna. Thank you for coming. And uh, you're not embarrassed by me calling your name, right? That's good, because people are going to be calling your name. This is prophetic. People are going to be calling your name for help. They're going to need you to help them. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Um, what else, Lord? What else? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to, there's two scriptures that I want to bring to your attention. One is uh, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And let's go there if you have your Bible. <coughs> Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And you know, the, you know the scripture. But we need to be reminded of these things, lest we let them slip. Is what what, what the, the writer of Hebrews says, pay, pay the most earnest heed to the things you hear lest you let them slip. We don't, we don't let nothing that God has shown us slip because those are the things that help us to be successful in this Christian life. Every revelation that you get is a mind changer. It puts the old stuff out and it, it brings a new God thought inside. Praise the Lord. So we should not let them slip. And if we, if we stay uh, consistent, and seeking after, after the Lord, the Lord will continue to bring them to our attention. He'll remind you. However, he reminds you. You know, remember this? Remember I showed you this? You could be in a test, and he'll say, remember this? This scripture I told you? Use that right there. Make it active right now. I gave it for you for this reason. Praise the Lord. So that scripture says in Proverbs 3, 5, lean on. Trust in, now this is Amplify, y'all know I like the Amplify Bible. And it was encouraging to me to hear the pastor say that it's probably one of the most genuine, authentic translations. Because I, I love it, I don't always understand it because it's so wordy, you know. I have to have my dictionary <laughs> to sometimes to figure out what's going, what's, what's being said. But when I do figure out what's being said, it's engrafted. It stays there, you know, or remember it, you know. But sometimes it takes study to do it. Don't always come just like that. Praise the Lord. But that's one of the reasons why God said to study, to show yourself approved, work with God, not be sent right to providing words to truth. To get out of what you need to get out of it, you need to get into it, to find out what's happening, to meditate on it, to find out what's going on. Lean on trust, Amplified, fifth verse, Lean on trust then and be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind, it says in the Amplified Bible. I think that's good that he added that in mind. Your mind definitely needs to be engaged for your behavior to change. Amen. With all your heart and mind and do not rely on your own understanding, your own insight and understanding. You know, you know, before we were born again, a lot of us thought we were some kind of smart. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but God said, I love you, but you ain't so smart. <laughs> you know, your insight and understanding ain't where it is. It's what I say that's what it is. That's what you should be focused on. Amen. Praise the Lord. In all your ways, in all your ways, in all your ways. He didn't say some of them now. Because we can be real selective sometimes. Well, let me just, right here, okay, I'm going to walk in that, but this over here, I'm going to leave that alone for right now. Because I'm doing something that that won't work with. We do that. In all your ways, recognize and acknowledge him. Then what does it say? And he will direct and make straight your path. Hallelujah. Now, you can always, you can use that for any, any scripture. Trust in it. Any portion of the scripture, trust in what it says. And he'll do what he says he'll do. Praise God. So that was one uh, passage of scripture. And I, I'm, I'm saying this because in my message, you'll be getting snapshots of this, this passage of scripture. You'll see what I'm saying. 
as I go through the message. I'm not going to be before you too long. I've decided that I'm not going to be here long, okay? I've, de- I've decided. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, it's uh, Matthew. I think it's 11. You know, and who I'm going to, if, if I'm off, tell me. Matthew 11, it says, Come unto me, all you labor and heavy laden. Is that 11? Okay. 28. Okay, thank you. Okay, 1128. So, now this is Jesus speaking. And although he was speaking to those that were in his midst, he's speaking this to the world. He's saying, come to me, Amplify, all you who labor and are heavy laden and overburdened. And we all come to that place sometime. Heavy laden. That means you, you, you know, you're, you're, you, you're putting your work in. But, but, but sometimes you put too much work in. So you're overburdened. Praise the Lord. But Jesus said, it's all good. Just come to me. I'll help you out. He not said he helped you out. But he says, and I will cause you to rest. Praise God. Praise God. I mean, no matter what you're going through, even if you're in sin. Matter of fact, it'd be better if you go if you're in sin to get that burden off of you. Because those burdens can be something else, the burden of sin. And sometimes hard to remove. So you really need to approach them. And if they're not removed right away, keep going. Keep pressing, keep pressing, keep pressing. Press for that mark, like Paul said, that prize for Jesus. Press for it. Hallelujah. I will cause you to rest. He said, I will ease and relieve and refresh your souls. Hallelujah. Now, I wrote some definitions out. I, you know, one reason why I write, I write definitions out is because, you know, when I was attacked, now I allowed, I allowed myself to be attacked by some of the stuff I was doing. But it's still, you know, you reap what you sow. <laughs> so it, it had an effect on me. So, but the Lord flipped the script, you know. Although I had difficulties with my memory, the Lord helped me to love uh, words. So I like looking them up. It's an adventure when I, find, when I find out the meaning of a word. Praise the Lord. So that word or labor and heavy laden of a burden. Excuse me. Labor, heavy laden and overburdened causes you to sweat. The priest, the priest. The born again believers are priests according to God and have authority to offer uh, to God a spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Christ Jesus. Christ being the high priest, and we are subordinate to him. Now, that was a little script that I wrote after I wrote uh, Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28. But this is a definition of relieve. Cause someone to stop feeling distress or anxiety. Isn't that good? Jesus said, come to me when you're feeling distress and anxiety, and I'll cause it to stop. You know, and I know y'all can relate to this because you hear it everywhere, especially, you know, now that we have to stay at home, and so we have to do our social media thing a lot, a more a lot. But that's good. See, God knows how to work stuff. I'm telling you. But this epidemic or pandemic, since it's global, God wants us to come to him concerning this thing. He'll give you information about it. He'll help you to pray about it. He'll show you things that you need to know, to know about it so you can stay steady and keep walking with him. So we don't need to fear. We don't need to sweat. We could be at peace. Because God's got us when we come to Jesus. Amen? 
Praise the Lord. Call someone to stop feeling the stress or anxiety. That's trouble mind. And we've all been there somewhere, sometime, at some time. Sometimes a lot. Matter of fact, I was there today. Uh, yeah, today. Because <laughs> today. I knew I was going to have to preach. And fear was right there. You know, at the threshold. You know. Thoughts coming to my mind. You know how the devil works. Different thoughts come to your mind. And I said, Lord, um, check this out. This is what I did. You know, the Bible said, count it all joy. <laughs> so, so I started laughing. <laughs> I didn't feel like laughing. But he said, count it all. He didn't say you have to be full of it. I just, I'm counting this as joy, Lord, as I'm going through this test. Praise the Lord. And so I did that. And the, and the thing, the fear didn't remove for a minute. But I just kept on. I kept counting all joy. I did what I felt I needed to do before I got here to preach. And if, in some way, the Lord lifted it from me. God's word always works. It always does. If you work it. <laughs> that, that's the deal. We got to work it. And sometimes I haven't. But this time I did. Praise the Lord. So, um, cause relief. Cause someone to stop feeling distress or anxiety about something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Something else this morning happened to me. Uh, what was going on? Oh, Okay. And before I got up, I was having these dreams, too. These some, I had, so the last few nights, I was having some nice dreams. I mean, I had dreams where uh, twice there were Hollywood stars. I was face-to-face -face with them. One was telling me, his name, you remember, what was his name, Bill Murray? That was one of them. He was telling me about how he wasn't what he should be, and he needed help. And uh, I don't recall what happened after that. But then another one was this black dude that he's on a sitcom. I, I can't think of his name is. I, I, never, I never tried to remember his name. But he's well known if I, could, if I, knew, his, <laughs> if I knew his name. <laughs> you know who I was talking about. But I was face to face with him. And uh, what was he doing? Oh, I left him somewhere because he and I wasn't on the same what? Road. He wanted to stay where he was, and I felt like I need to, I was on a mission. So I had to leave him sitting in the house playing cards. So those are my dreams. But I like dreaming. I, so, so I didn't want to wake up. <laughs> but I had to wake up. And that's when, I, when, I, when this anxiety started to attack me. And when I went through, through when I had to do the, uh, the uh, count it all joy thing. Praise the Lord. Some other stuff happened too, but I don't recall right now what, that, what it was. But anyway, refresh, because that was part of it, right? I will ease and relieve and refresh your soul, your mind, will, emotion, your self-life. Um, refresh means to give new strength or energy to reinvigorate. That's what it means. Refresh, to give new strength, new energy to reinvigorate. Now, if I just said new, stre new, new strength, new energy, re revigorate, without saying how do you get that, then you'll just be suspended. But, I, but I'm saying if you come to Jesus and speak to him, communicate with him, if you're overburdened, then he'll do that for you. He'll cause new strength to come to you. He'll cause energy to come to you. He'll cause you to be reinvigorated. If you come to him. I don't think we think about that often. I know I don't think about it as often. I just, you know, I, sometimes I just, just as burdensome as it is, just, you know, go through it. Rather than saying, Lord, help. I'm learning to do that. But sometimes I do it for a minute, and then I'm reminded, man, you should ask me. <laughs> I mean, the Lord has actually said that. You should have asked me. I would have helped you. And so when he says it, and I say, will you help me, please? And then sometimes immediately, boom, I get the help. So I'm able to walk out whatever I'm in, involved in. Praise the Lord. Okay. 
So there's more to that verse of scripture. Um, I'm going to finish that. And then I'm going I'm to say something about tongues. Because we were just on that. And I thought it was appropriate to reiterate some things that the pastor said about tongues. Because you know you can come to Jesus and get that too. Where else are you going to get it from? I hope you ain't getting it from nobody else. <laughs> like, like some say we get it from other places. <laughs> That's of the devil. You know, people say that. They don't understand. They're ignorant. They, I understand it. But they say it. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. I am gentle, meek, and humble, lowly in heart, and you will find rest, relief, and ease and refreshment and recreation and blessed quiet. Quiet is a big word. Praise the Lord. In this noisy society, I mean, you know, sometimes, now I used to do the same thing that I don't like people to do to me now. <laughs> I mean, when you're driving in a car, and you got, you know the speakers that they make now. They'll have, you can be two lanes over and in, in, in the in the in the boom in that in that in the in the in the vehicle too late, too late, so two lanes over, have you have you bumping. <laughs> I used to like to do that when I was younger. But now, so so I have to I have to say, Lord, I'm sorry, forgive me. Because I have thoughts that I shouldn't have about that person. <laughs> but God is good. He understands. And, and he eventually, and see, I eventually I understand. But that's what the Spirit of God will do. He'll help you to understand what you're doing. That's when you'll settle down and say, okay, and just keep on motivating. And, then, and, and sometimes he'll tell you, pray for that dude. So I'll just say, help him, Lord, you know, and keep on moving. Praise God. Anyway, so I was going to say something about <clears throat> the tongues. Is God still good out there? Or did he decide he wasn't going to be good no more and go home? God is forever good. Okay. Okay, I'm going to start here. So it might seem like I'm a little off, but I'm trying to find a place here. So as I say, I need help. Pray for me. We are born-again believers. We, as born-again believers, have Christ's mind that needs to be engaged in our thought lives. Because we don't always engage it. Sometimes we just be rattling off the old man stuff. You know what I'm saying? As we grow up and... That old man thought life is replaced with God's thought because we're pressing into him. Then we'll, we'll start expressing the mind of Christ more. And we do. That's what we're doing. More and more. You remember how I used to talk? I remember how I used to talk. Praise the Lord. And I can still talk like that if I want to. If I wanted to. But the want to ain't there no more. Praise the Lord. It is gone. Thank God. <laughs> We praise God. A friend of mine was on the phone with me the other day, and they were upset and excited. You know, this viral thing have people upset and excited. And so they're on the phone, and they were talking, and they just profanity. I say, do you have to talk like that? Oh, no, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But, you know, if you're not... If you haven't determined to press in the Lord and get what he's got for you, you're going to revert. I mean, that reversion can turn into a backslidden state. It's the beginning of it. So you need to, we need to, if it's us, need to check ourselves and say, Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry. Help me to get through this. Help me to do other because I'm not supposed to do what I'm doing right now. But anyway, that person, you know, said, I'm sorry. I said, okay, 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 okay. 
I'm good. Now, I understood the person because, you know, I've been knowing him for quite a while. But I was kind of surprised because I hadn't heard that from that person in quite a while. Anyway, so we have to learn to continue to do that. Uh, let's see. We, we as born-again believers have Christ's mind that needs to be engaged in our thought lives. We have to learn to continue to do that. It's seeded. It's seeded. You know, it's not full-grown and complete yet. But it grows. It's seeded when, it, when we newly come to Christ, but it grows and produces as we continually Seek the Lord. What do you mean by seeking the Lord, Brother Mike? Practicing receiving him as royal subjects and operating in his presence, spirit. In every instance, in every instance is our goal. We are to learn to engage it primarily through praying in the spirit. And this is where I'm reiterating some of what Pastor said. Or in unknown tongues. And studying, then meditating the word. See, these are, this is primary. All of it's good. The word of God is good. But these things are primary. Absolutely primary. You got you to gotta do these things to get where you need to get in the Lord. And everything else kind of falls in place when you do this. Praying in tongues is able to speak unto God rather than man. Which is a direct communication to the mind of Christ. Speaking mysteries. Or a, a, a uh, definition would be divine truths known by revelation alone. And getting a response, particularly when we ask that the tongues be interpreted. Now, Pastor was talking about that the other day. You know, why are you praying in tongues? Lord, what did I just say? The Lord will tell you if you wasn't, if you wasn't here. If you wasn't here, he'll tell you what you said. And it's good to know what you're saying. Praise the Lord. When you're supposed to know what you're saying. Sometimes you just <clears throat> tongue, tongue, tongue. Don't need to know. Just know it's a perfect prayer and God is doing through your prayer what he needs to do. Known by revelation alone. And getting a response particularly when you ask the Lord, when you ask that the tongues be interpreted. Practicing speaking in unknown tongues will cause godly thoughts to come to us in abundance. It'll start to flow. I mean, if you're sincere about doing it, if you have faith in what you're doing, you'll be getting revelation. Like, what should I do? Be, I guess you won't be saying, what should I do with this? But in your mind, okay, Lord, what should I do with this? Okay, what should I do with that? That's him directing your path. He'll show you what to do with all that stuff. He don't just give you a bunch of stuff to hear. Okay, just sort it out. <laughs> However you want to sort it out. No. The Bible says that the steps of a righteous man are ordered. So he'll order that stuff that he gives you and show you direction. Practice speaking in unknown tongues will cause godly thoughts to come to you in abundance. It enables you to go deeper into God's heart. The more you press, the deeper you get. I've noticed that just by watching us, you know, members of the congregation. I noticed it. I said, wow, Lord, you are working something up in here, ain't you? <laughs> That's what I be thinking sometimes. Because I know because you're consistent, and you're pressing, you're getting deeper into God's heart. When you get deeper into God's heart, God gives you sometimes more, sometimes just more concentrated stuff. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Praise the Lord. <clears throat> so it enables you to go deeper into God's heart and mine. And it will be evident when practiced continually. So God might extend his grace for you to hit it and quit it for a minute. 
But that's not the way God operates. He said he rewards those that diligently seek him. So it's got to be continual. If we want God. You know, look, look, God is always trying to give you what he got. He'll give you whatever he can with whatever you're doing. Because he loves you. Don't you do that with your kids? They might be acting a fool. But you give them what you can give them. Now, we have that same similitude as parents, as God does. Well, we have the same similitude of God. In other words, we act like him. So, he'll give you as much as he can give you with what you're doing. Did somebody say hallelujah? If you ain't, I'm going to say it. Hallelujah. Because <laughs> sometimes I feel like I come so short. But then I say, wow, well, Lord, where did this come from? Thank God I didn't have to work for it because I would have been zipped. I, I would have got zipped. You know what I'm saying? It reminded me of this friend of mine when I was in the streets. His name was, um, his name was uh, Quick. He was a boxer from New York. He's a thug, though, straight up thug. <laughs> but he was my friend, you know. And Quick, you know, Quick, he was adventurous, you know. We'd be in the car, and Quick had his music to get him ready to go com com uh, commit a crime. So he played his music. Da, 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 da. It'd be some rap stuff or something. So you know rap that's real hard rap, and they be cussing and da 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 da. da. And then quick say, uh oh, somebody getting ready to come up short. <laughs> Amen. And they did, cause he was motivated. He was inspired. That devil inspired him through that stuff he was doing. Praise the Lord. But it was amusing to me because I was like, you know, I was there, but I wasn't a participant. Like I was in the car, but I wasn't participating in what he was doing. So, so I was amused by it. As much as I could be amused in sin, you know what I'm saying. I was sin amused. Is that a proper term? Anyway. Uh, <laughs> in sin amused. But anyway, praise the Lord. Let me, let me state that last thing that I stated. It enables you to go deeper in God's heart and mind, and it will be evident when, you pra when it's practiced continually. And remember that scripture. I think it's Hebrews 11.6. God rewards those that diligently seek him. You got to go after him. Really. Excuse me. Have you been saved, you know, several years and been committed to this church, especially this church body? You'll recognize that. You'll know that that's the case. You can't be off and on, in and out. And not, you know, you can be, but you'll lack. You'll lack. And see, God will, you'll, you'll come to a place where God be, will be expectant. He'll say, I expect you to do this or that. And if you don't do it, I don't know about you, but I get this heaviness on the inside of me. This, is that grief? Grief on the inside of me. And I say, okay, Lord, okay. I'm up. I'm doing it. See? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Because, you know, there's a temptation. The devil's out there, and he has a idea of what your potential is. And he's trying to block you whenever he can block you, however he can block you. Because he knows, and I, I, I mentioned this before, and I'm not the one that coined this, gray, this phrase, but if you give him an inch, he will take a mile. He will work in you until that mile is gotten. Praise God. Okay. So that's the tongues part. So let me move ahead a little bit. And again, I won't be long. 
much longer. <sighs> okay, I'm going to John 10, 27. Because we're talking about before. Now, this is a message that I started before and I didn't finish. But we're talking about before knowing God's voice and how the devil is an angel of light and he sends ministers after him that camouflage himself as ministers of righteousness. Remember that? He does it. So you got to watch it. It'd be on TV sometime. You know what I'm saying? Some of the people you be listening to, and some, some of the people you listen to are in and out. Oh, man. Did I say that? I did. But some are in and out. So, you know, you've got to, you got to be pressing. Because there's a scripture that said that, uh, that even the very elect will be deceived if they don't watch out. But, see, it's not difficult for God to help you to be discerning. It ain't no hardship for him. All you got to do is commit to him. You can say it, Lord, I'm committed to you. Move all the obstacles out of my way so I can see clearly. You said you direct my path. You said that you'll direct and make it straight. You know God ain't going to lie. He's not lying. He won't lie. He said, if you trust in him, you can tell him. You can make a decree, make a demand, a command. You can say, I trust in you with all my heart. I lean not to my understanding. In all my ways, I acknowledge you. Like, what do you want me to do about this? And then he said, he'll direct your path. His word will not return void. It'll do exactly what he said it'll do. It's not difficult for him. Sometimes it's difficult to us to get it, to get what we're after. But if we press, continue to press, we'll get it. God will move through all those obstacles. You know, those mountains that he say, you can say move and it'll be cast into the sea if you don't doubt in your heart. So faith is necessary. But believe what he says come to pass, you'll have whatsoever you say. And that's what scripture says. Mark eleven twenty three, 23, I believe it is. Anyway, John 10, 27 says, the sheep that are my own, hear and listen to my voice. The sheep that are my own, hear and listen to my voice. And I know them, and they follow me. Well, you can say by personal experience, Lord, I don't always listen to you and follow your voice. Well, could he not be talking about your inner man? It'll hear you when your out man don't hear it. That's why we go through that thing that Paul was talking about in Romans. The law of sin and death. Fight, fighting against the law of life. So your inner man be wanting to do what the Lord tells you to do and your outer man be wanting to do something else. <laughs> We have to say, uh-uh, oh, outer man, you got to do what thus saith the Lord. Because your inner man is perceptive. He'll hear. You may not want to hear. Your focus might be on TV or that movie or that girl or that boy or whoever, that thing. But your inner man is hearing. <laughs> and it's saying, come on, man. God wants us to do this. And we keep doing all the things, keep doing things that we shouldn't be doing, then that voice will be what the scripture says, seared like a hot iron. You won't, it become more and more faint. Praise the Lord. And I know them, and they follow me. John 10, Matthew 24, 25. Amplified says this, Jesus answered them, be careful that no one misleads you, deceiving you and leading you into error. For many will come in on the strength of my name, appropriating, that means take something for their own use, the name which belongs to me, saying, I am the Christ, the Messiah. 
and they will lead many astray. And they've already done that. They've done it from the time Jesus said it up until now. Many has been led astray. Next is an illustration of how the devil could come to you working through a person. Do y'all remember re me reading this before? Okay, good. Y'all, I'm taking that as a no. <laughs> so I'm saying, I'm saying good, if that's a no. <laughs> Next is the illustration of how the devil could come to you working through a person and say all the marvelous things that he's done, counterfeiting, counterfeiting as if the Lord is speaking through them. But because you know God's voice and his methods regarding you, you know, he has different methods for different people. He can speak to you from one place and then and, and another, and another, and, and to another person from another place and say different things. But he gets his points across. He has a different way for different people because you're unique. But because you know God's voice and his methods regarding you, due to your intimate relationship with him, you will know that it's not the Lord at all but the servant of Satan, the devil counterfeiting, masquerading as a minister of righteousness. That's 1 Corinthians eleven fifteen. You'll find that portion in 1 Corinthians eleven fifteen. Then Matthew 7, 21, 23, Amplified. Actually, it's Amplified Bible Classic Edition. <clears throat> Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Who is in heaven? Who is in heaven? That's key right there. Because, you know, this is what came to me when that, I, I was watching this movie, and uh, they showed a scene in New York, and some religious people in that scene, and they had banners up, signs up. I think there's signs more than banners. And one of the signs, or maybe several of the signs, but I noticed one. It says, uh, I don't recall what the, what the preacher's name was, but I believe it says, I'm going to just make up a name because I don't remember what the name was. Father George is God. See, he on earth. So it's key. It, that's, that could be key. The will of my Father who is in heaven. Who is in heaven? There are those on the earth that are saying, I am the Father. Like that example that I just gave. And, uh, and, and I knew this before I saw that movie. And, you know, all the stuff, there's a lot of, well, there's vile stuff going on all over the planet. But New York, man, they got some dark stuff going on there. <laughs> I just use dark. So you take dark and work it out however you want to see what dark is. They got some stuff going on there. So anything could happen. But I knew, I've seen even back in the past, even before I got saved, how men were saying, I am God. You know, uh, send me $100 and I'll send you this bottle of, of anointed oil. So it's not something that's just happening. It's been happening. <clears throat> and a lot of people are, are persuaded. Thank you. That's one who does the word of God when, when and where it needs to be done. Again, let me read the scripture again so you know, it won't seem like I'm coming from left field. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Now, that's one who does the word of God when and where it needs to be done. Being led by the Holy Ghost. Now, I use Holy Ghost instead of Holy Spirit. You know why? One reason why is to honor uh, Pastor Bishop. Because he wouldn't use Holy Spirit. <laughs> he used Holy Ghost every time. That's why he was brought up. And so I'm, I'm saying that to honor him, Bishop. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> That's one who does the, will of the word of God when and where it needs to be done, being led by the Holy Ghost, to do it with 
accuracy. See, the Holy Ghost will lead you. You can have a lot of stuff going on in you, but it takes the Holy Ghost to say, okay, that thing that I show you, do it now. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> this is doing the will of the Father, but you got to be in a position to hear him and know that is him. How do you do that, Brother Matt? Practically? How to become more aware of things that, are, that you are working with? <clears throat> and the answer to that question, I'm going to answer that question. You spend more time and intensity with them. Sometimes it's not necessary to spend the time. Just get deep into it. You know, just, ooh. I don't know how to, exp how to explain that. I, I don't know how to illustrate it. You just, whew. I'm going I'm to talk it out. Ibrahato Sivere. Interpret that. Anyway, you just did, you, mm, here I am, Lord. Do what you will. Do what you will, Lord. Do what you will. Praise you. Spend more time intensity with him. <clears throat> Practicing intimacy with him or it. That's how you become more aware of things that you're working with. Intensity, and sometimes more time and intensity. Well, it's the same thing. In the same way, the more time with intensity that you spend with the Lord intimately and in loving, which is doing his word, prayer, study, meditating, profession, that's declaration and confession, assembling with believers, in any kind of worship, which is showing your affection, that's what worship is, showing your affection, humbling ourselves before him, the deeper that you will become acquainted with the Lord. And then I added on to this today, or know his heart. Praise the Lord. About five more minutes. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Now, studying, studying is extremely important because you've got to be able to compare what you get from those other means, loving, doing his word, prayer, meditating, professing, declaration, confessing. You have what you say, Mark eleven twenty three, 23, assembling with believers uh, with the word to know that you are really on track. So studying is necessary. To know that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Because remember, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not your understanding, all your ways acknowledge him. you got to acknowledge him to find out that you're doing what you're doing. It's right. Now, if you're doing it, it can be all good. And Lord, it eventually will show it to you. Yeah, I was doing what I was supposed to be right. That's happened to me a number of times. I was just, because on the inside, because Jesus is there already. You've accepted him. When you accepted him, you accepted this. It's in there. Praise the Lord. He is the word, right? In the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was God. It's in there. It may need to be stirred up, but it's in there. Matter of fact, that's the reason why a lot of times we can say amen. Praise the Lord, because it's in there. <clears throat> okay, assembling ourselves, uh, so we're really on track. Okay, this is drawing near to him. And what did he say he do when you did that? He will. I'm going to do it again. He will. <laughs> okay, I'm going to be your voice. He will draw near to you. When, he <laughs> when, he draw, when you draw near to him, he will draw near to you. To you. Praise the Lord. And that's a good thing. When he draws near to you, you can observe him better or watch him more attentively. It's like if Sister Judy, I may not be able to see all of, she, all of her right now, but as we come closer to one another, I'll be able to see more and more of her. 
she'll be able to see more and more of me. I'll be able to pay more attention to her. I can see better. I'll be able to observe better. Same with the Lord. That's to give an illustration. Oh, yeah, doing these essentials are doing what the Lord says to do or keeping his commandment. And that is showing him that you love him. Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Isn't that what he says? Praise the Lord. I'm done for the night. Now, do y'all normally stand? Do they normally stand or do y'all sit down while I pray? Okay, just sit. Dear Lord, thank you and bless you for your word and your spirit and for these men and women that have gathered here to gather with us. We're believers. Father, we have done what we believe we're supposed to do. We've ministered your word. We trust that your word will not return void, but it will accomplish the things what you sent it to do. You said your word is quick, alive, powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, able to divide asunder the soul and the spirit, the joint and the marrow. Thank you. Father, we trust that it's doing its, doing its work right now in us. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done or what you're doing and will can, continue to do as that word is made alive in us. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God.